Hey friends, welcome to this session of Healing Talks. I'm so very excited to be with you all tonight. Uh, those of you that are partners with us, thank you so very much for all of your prayers and your encouragement and support. Hey, wherever you're watching from, if you would, if you would please put that in the comments, put your name and put your location, the state, country, wherever you're watching from. It's always a thrill to see where everyone is watching at all around the world. Hey, I want to let you know, um, what was it? Oh, so we were in Raleigh, North Carolina this weekend, this past weekend. And a few days before that, we're in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I got the opportunity to speak at Life of Faith Church on Wednesday night. I uh, spoke Thursday night for Army, which is Andrew Wilmack's uh, Ministerial Association. They had a, uh, a, a conference for the, the Southeast region there. So very honored and privileged to get to speak to that uh, or speak to those pastors and ministers on Thursday night. Went to Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Man, we did, I say we, me did nine, about nine hours of teaching on uh, Saturday. I mean, by the time I got done Saturday night, I was exhausted. <laughs> I was about to fall over. And then we did uh, Sunday morning service and did some, uh, some, some meetings with their leadership and staff uh, after church. So had a great, great time. I'm exhausted. I'm really, really tired at this point. So looking forward to getting some rest over the next few days. But Hey, I wanted to also let you know we're going to be in Minnesota. Um, not this weekend, but the following weekend we'll be in Minnesota. Uh, Friday night, Saturday, during the day, Sunday, I can't remember the service times. We'll be in Minnesota. And then we're going to be in England. Our first trip back to England, be in Farnham, England. Uh, we've already got, I think there's about 85 people already registered for those meetings there. Uh, we have an Eventbrite, pray, Eventbrite page that's set up. But if you just go to our website, chagonzales.com, go to the schedule link, and you'll be able to find uh, the information for the England meetings and click on that and register. We, we really need you to register for that if you're going because the venue that we're using, there is a, there's a capacity limit there for the seating. And so we need to make sure that we're going to have enough space there uh, for that. So I'm very, very excited to meet all of our wonderful partners there in the UK. Um, so excited we've been getting so many wonderful messages from people that are coming in, not just from the UK, but surrounding countries as well uh, there in Europe. So really excited to see you guys and so thankful. You know, I want to make mention of this. This weekend in, in North Carolina, I was blown away. We had people that came from Oregon, uh, Montana, um, several surrounding states around um, uh, North Carolina. Uh, there was a lot of people that traveled in for that. And I just want to say thank you. I know I say it a bunch, but it really does. It, it means the world to me that you guys would take the time and spend the money to come and be a part of those meetings. And it's just amazing to see uh, what God's doing and, and, and the movement God is building through all of this. And I'm just so very excited to be able to do this together with you. And uh, I think we just got the best partners in the world and, and really excited to see all those that are coming on board with us and joining the Dream Team every single week. And just, just so thrilled to be a part of what God is doing. So we're looking forward to seeing you in Minnesota. Looking forward to seeing you in, in England. We're going to be in Arizona uh, in August and somewhere else. I can't remember, can't remember where else. But anyway, got some great stuff going on. Hey, I wanted to take, oh, last thing. If you didn't see the email about the app, hey, we've got an app out now. Uh, the one for the Android phones came out right about the time of the conference, advanced conference. Uh, but the one for the Apple, the iPhones, was just released Friday, I believe. It was approved by Apple. So it's there in the App Store. And so download that. We've got lots of stuff in there. Uh, there's several things that are being added and tweaked. But check it out. Get it for your phone. Get it for your tablet. And it's good, good stuff. I've been looking at it today. So what I wanted to do tonight, I've, I've been waiting to do this for a while. And I thought today would be a, a good day to do this. You know... Coming up uh, here in a, in a day or two, it'll be three months since Lacey moved to heaven. And the week after, one of the healing the healing talk we did the week after, I sat in here and just kind of laid it out there for you. Everything that happened, um, everything that I could tell you. There was one piece that I told you I would tell you at some point, but I didn't do it that night. But I told you that, that the Lord did something for me right here in, in our office building. But I just wasn't at a place that I thought needed to share it. But 
A few weeks ago, I was at Life of Faith Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Was it a few weeks ago? I think it, or maybe, it, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of lost track of my time here, but uh, within the last month, I think, month and a half, I was I was in Birmingham, Alabama, Life of Faith Church, did a Wednesday night service, and um, and I told about the thing I was going to tell you about. And so there still isn't a lot of people that seen that. So I want to take tonight, I just want to share this wonderful, wonderful thing that God did for me. And it'll show you, explain to you why Jake and I are doing so extremely well. And I wanted to, I want to go and share this with you because I, I shared it this past Sunday in Raleigh. And I think it's just at a point I need to share it because I'm continually having people come up to me and say, hey, Jay, I'm so sorry about what happened, you know, to Lacey and and, you know, and my response every time has been, oh, you know, I appreciate it, but man, we're doing so good. And then I get this look, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, we just, I just want to let you know that we're, we're praying for you and we're, we feel so sorry. And my response is, I appreciate it, but I want to let you know, like, we're doing really, really good. We're, we're doing good. We're great. And, and moving forward and enjoying life. And, and I just get that look. And so I decided, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to share this today so that you all know. Uh, I was talking about Sunday. I said, I'm going to share this today, service, so you all know I'm not making this up. We're not in denial. There's something really, really awesome that happened for me. And so I shared it. And I had so many people come up to me and say, oh, my goodness, thank you so much for sharing that. So anyway, I decided I was going to take tonight and just put it out there once and for all so that you all know what God did for me. Just a sovereign, supernatural, wonderful thing that God did for me for my sake, for the ministry's sake, so that we can move forward, we can continue on and fulfill the plan that God has for us and the ministry. So let me take you back, okay? So April 2nd, that Sunday night, 8.15, Lacey moves to heaven, okay? And uh, so that Wednesday, me and two of my crazy friends, we were right here in this office building and there's a room over here. We'd come in here to spend some time praying just to get some some uh, discernment, uh, get a, uh, well, just to get an idea of kind of where we need to go, what to do, and uh, get just, just get some leading on what we were going to do the next day, because the next day, we were going to go to the funeral home. You know, our plan was we were going to raise her up. I mean, there was just no if and but about it. So we came up here, we, it was about 5.30, I think, 4 or 5, 5 o'clock, came up here to pray. And so me and my two buddies, we're in there and we're sitting on the floor and we're praying in tongues and just seeking direction and insight for the Lord. Well, I was sitting there on the floor, got my eyes closed and I'm praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, I'm going to say something. Now, I, I would hope that you know at this point, I am not one of the weird ones. Okay. I think some strange, crazy things. I'm pushing for things. But when I tell you about something supernatural that happened for me, this isn't me just pulling something out of my rear, you know, like if I'm telling you something, it legit happened. OK, so I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just blunt. Uh, so I'm sitting there and I've got my eyes closed and praying in tongues. And all of a sudden I felt her. I knew that she was here with me. And before my brain had time to process what I was feeling, I said this, and my, and my buddy heard me. I said this. I said, Lacey, you just got a whole lot closer to me than what you were. It's almost like, you know, when you're, when you're standing somewhere, you're in a room or something, and you don't see them, but someone comes up right behind you. They sneak up behind you, and, and you know somebody's there. You just got that sense that someone's there. Well, it was basically like that. I'm sitting there, and I'm praying, got my eyes closed, and all of a sudden, I felt her to the degree that I said, you just got a whole lot closer to me than what you were. The moment I said that, I had a vision. I had my eyes closed, but I am seeing just like you're seeing me. And I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the scenery in here, like I'm seeing, okay, my eyes are closed, but I have this vision and I see her. I am seeing her for how she is now. And I will never forget this as long as I live. I mean, I can close my eyes right now and I can see it. With my eyes closed, I just said, 
you just got a whole lot closer to me than what you were. And instantly, I had a vision. And with my eyes closed, I'm seeing her. And the only way I know how to describe it, as if like you took a snow globe and you brought it up near to your face. And there was this, there was this, uh, well, yeah, like a snow globe. And so I could see the, the base, the, the bottom of this thing. Now, it wasn't glass and it wasn't curved. But it was almost like a, the only way I know, I know how to describe it was like a, a translucent veil, curtain-like. And I couldn't see the ends of it. But I could see the edge of the surface that she was standing on. I could see the outer edge of it. And she's standing there behind this, this translucent kind of glimmery veil, curtain-like material. And she's standing there and she's smiling at me. And, you know, I can close, I can see that. And, oh, it just, it touched me. She's smiling at me. And she's wearing this long white uh, gown, robe type thing. And she's standing there and she's smiling at me. And then she walks right up to the edge of this veil. And she pressed her face against it like this. And she got her right hand and she stuck it through that veil. And she pushed her hand and her arm all the way through, all the way up to her shoulder. So she's got her, her face pressed against it. And she's got her, her shoulder pressed against it as far as she could go right there. Well, I'm not going to lie. I see that. It kind of freaked me out. I, close, I opened up my eyes. I said, guys, I got to tell you what just happened. So I relayed the story of what just happened for what I just saw, what I just experienced. Well, I got so excited because I told them, guys, this is what the Lord just did for me. This is what I just saw. Lacey is standing there on the edge of glory. She's standing there with her arm out and she's waiting on me to pull her over. Well, we were going to the funeral home the next morning at nine o'clock. That was the time the funeral director gave us nine to 10. We were going to raise her up. When God did that for me, I was like, this is a done deal. Like, we already knew it was going to happen. But God just did this to encourage me and show me, hey, it's going to happen. She's, she's standing there waiting on me to pull her over. So we get all excited. We talked about it that evening. Go to dinner. They go to their hotel. I go home. And it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock now. And I walk outside and I get on Jake's trampoline to go spend some time praying. As I'm out there praying, I was out there about 20 minutes. The entire time I'm out there, this thought continues to just, just bombard me. This thought, she's not waiting on you to pull her over. She's waiting on you to come. And every time that thought would come, I'd be like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm not thinking that. I've been so focused for the last three days on maintaining my thought life, staying laser focused on, on the mission at hand. I mean, I found out Sunday night, all through Sunday night, all day Monday, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday. I have been laser focused. I've taken husband Chad, put him off in a box. And it's it's in Christ, man, minister, man, you know. We got a, we got a mission here. And for like 20 minutes, I mean, just nonstop, I could not get away from this thought that I had misinterpreted. I had put my own interpretation on what God sovereignly did for me because I was so focused on what I'm going after and what we're going to do. I couldn't get away from that thought. She's not waiting on you to pull her over. She's waiting on you to come. I got so mad, I walked inside, pulled up my Bible, read a few things, got a little snack, went to bed. Got up the next morning at 6 o'clock, Spend some time praying some more. Me and Jake, we go to the funeral home at nine. We go in there, we get started praying. As we're praying, for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I'm getting frustrated because as I'm, as I'm praying, I can tell I'm not connecting. I'm not getting anywhere in my prayers. To the point of, after about 20, 25 minutes, I started saying this, Holy Ghost, take hold of my words. Take hold of my words. Take hold of my words. Because I knew I wasn't getting anywhere. And this thought is, is right there the whole time. 
she's not waiting on you to pull her over. And I kept pushing that, pushing that, and pushing that away. Well, then I began to plead with God. I was like, all right, this is why I need her. I was pleading my case with him. This is why I need her back. Da, 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 da. I'm going down my list. Now, I'm doing this under my breath. I'm do going down my list. After some time of doing that, I, I realized pretty quickly, mm, this ain't you. This isn't God withholding. This isn't his decision. This is hers. So I marched my little rear end right up to the casket. I'm standing over that casket. I'm looking at her body. I grab a hold of her hand, and I start pleading with her. And I start telling her. I stood right there in front of that casket. I said, Lacey, back in 2005, I had my heaven experience. I know some of the things that you're seeing. I know some of the things that you're experiencing. If I were you, <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't come back either. But I'm telling you, I need you to come back. I start pleading my case. I walked over into the corner on this side. And under my breath, I'm talking to her. I'm telling her, you need to come back. I need you to come back. I walk, By this time, I walked to the back of the room. We've been going about 45, 50 minutes now. I'm standing in the back of the room. I'm still talking to her. Telling her, you got to come back. I need you to come back. My other friend that was in the front, he's got this big, bassy, booming voice. He's, he's standing up there the casket, and he says this. He said, Lacey, I know where you're at. It's far greater, but I need you to come back. We need you to come back. And when he said that, I just, I just kind of broke because I knew I was fighting against something I could not change because this was her choosing to stay. About that time, the funeral director came in, said, guys, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, it's time for you. You have to go. And so my two friends came up to me and said, hey, uh, so what's the plan? What, what are we doing? What's, what's the direction? And I looked at him. I said, man, I didn't want to tell you about what I was dealing with last night. But I put my own interpretation on what God did for me. God sovereignly did that for me to show me she was okay. Two, this is her choice. Three, to give me some answers for some things so that I could move forward and answers for the ministry so that the ministry could continue to move forward. And I, I said, I apologize. That that was I, that was my bad. That was my wrong. And, and my friend, he looked at me and said, well, he said, I didn't want to say anything. But when I was standing up there, we were praying. He said, I just kept seeing her clinging on to Jesus. And I said, well, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I didn't see that, but I would have no problem believing that because I, I know I've known this since last night. And so, you know, then we sat down. I told Jake and, uh, you know, we cried. I, I bawled like a baby right there just because that I allowed husband Chad to come back. And just the reality of, you know, the immediate future hitting. And so, yeah, I mean, just those emotions come. And so that was on Thursday. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was on Thursday in the funeral. So on Wednesday afternoon, God gives me this vision. I see Lacey for how she is. And I see her at that veil, her arm extended, waiting on me. That's on Wednesday. We go to the funeral home on Thursday. So for the next three days, I'm not going to lie. And, and this is where I kind of picked up. Uh, it's on the story, you know, three months ago. But for those next three days of the weekend, I'm pretty, I'm numb. I'm just, I'm trying to process feelings and what am I going to do, you know, in the future? I'm a single dad. Never thought that. Never thought I'd be alone at 46. All this type of stuff. So, you know, I'm struggling that weekend a little bit. And, you know, with all the emotions, I know what I saw and I experienced here in this building. But with everything that's going on now and the emotions, you start to kind of question a little bit. So on Monday, now listen to this. This shows you how good God is. On Monday, one of my very best friends, David, he calls me. He said, Chad, I've got to talk to you. He says, I got to tell you about what just happened. He said, I just left lunch with my mother. And he said, my mother was watching a, uh, a service last Wednesday night by Nancy Dufresne. Nancy Dufresne, she's a pastor out in California. She had a prayer conference that week. Now remember what God did for me in this building on Wednesday afternoon. Now, his mother didn't know about this. She knew about Lacey, but didn't know about the experience that I had. And she was so excited about what she heard at this conference she was sharing with my friend David. And she said, Nancy Frayne, she was talking about this vision that this prophetess Clara Grace had. Now, I knew who Clara Grace was. 
Claire Grace was this uh, well-respected prophetess um, back in the 60s, 70s. She was really close to Kenneth Hagin. And so Nancy Dufresne is relaying this vision that Clara Grace had. And Clara Grace said in the 60s, she said, I had this vision in which the Lord showed me, allowed me to see those that had crossed over to the other side and that sometimes the Lord would allow, listen to this, Clara is telling this back in the 60s, okay? She said how the Lord would allow some of those who had passed on before us to walk up to that veil of glory and press their face and their arms and their hands through. And she begins to describe exactly what I saw in this building. Now think about this. Clara Grace is telling this in the 60s. And I'm seeing exactly what she saw and what she's relaying. And yet Nancy Dufresne in California on Wednesday night, an hour or two after what happened for me, is relaying this story from back in the 60s. My friend said as his mother was telling the story, his jaw just dropped. He was like, Mom, I've got to tell you what happened to Chad last week. And as he's telling her, her jaw dropped. And he's like, I've got to call him and tell him. Friends, I cannot tell you what this did for me. He calls me and he's telling me, telling me this. The only way I know how to describe what this did for me is that it literally ripped away any hurt, any loss, any numbness, uh, any question, anything negative associated with that. It just totally ripped it away. And all of my joy, all of my peace was restored in a moment. I mean, just in a moment. Total peace, total joy, because I knew what I experienced in this building on Wednesday. So that was a sovereign thing that God did for me. God sovereignly did that for me and also for the sake of the ministry. And then God in his sovereignty had Nancy Dufresne a few hours later relay this vision that confirmed what I saw, this vision of what this woman had back in the 60s. Think how good God is. Think how good he is that he would do that for me on Wednesday and a few hours later have a, a well-respected minister in California relay a story describing in detail exactly what I saw and yet Hers was back in the 60s. Think about that. God did that for me. And then not only did that for me, confirmed that through someone else. Absolutely amazing. I mean, astounding. And I'm just telling you, when God did that for me, that's the only way I know how to describe it. I mean, I got to see Lacey for how she is right now alive and stunning. I mean, just doing, just living her best life. I got to see her in her glorified state, living her best life, enjoying life and seeing her for how she is now, where she is now. I saw her smile at me. And it again, it not only took away all the, all the hurt stuff, it gave me my peace and my joy, but it also put me in a position of like, okay, I can move forward. I can move forward with my life. We can move forward with the ministry. And so that's why we picked back up on our schedule the next week. I canceled meetings those two weeks. We picked back, on our, picked back up on the schedule the next week. And we've been going just full blast and having a blast. Um, this is going to sound really, really crazy, but I mean, I'm enjoying life. And just having fun. We've been having fun. And it's not a thing of denial. I'm not denying that she's that Lacey's gone. I'm not denying that. But let me ask you a question. Why would you mourn over someone who's still alive? I'm not mourning over her. I mean, in many ways, I'm jealous. Like, when I think about her, my first thought is, 
man, Lacey, what are you seeing right now? Like, what are you experiencing? What are you learning right now? Like, that's my thought. I mean, do I miss her? Absolutely. We've been married for 20 years. She was my best friend. But, you know, just because she isn't here anymore and she's in heaven right now, that doesn't mean that the ministry stops. It doesn't mean that the mission stops. We've got a mission to fulfill. Friends, I've always been very, very kingdom-minded, very ministry-minded, mission-minded. We've got a job to do. You know, when Lacey and I, when we first met, we went on our first date. And when we had our first date, we're sitting on the border in Tulsa. And they brought her food, and we're talking. And we get through the normal chit-chat. And then I looked at her. I was 25. She was 19. I looked at her. And I said, hey, I've got a question for you. I said, um, this is what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to ministry. I need to know if this is on your heart or not. Because if it's not, then, you know, we'll enjoy tonight. We'll have fun. But this is going to be it because I'm not looking to just go on dates with people. Uh, I'm looking for a spouse. I'm looking for a, for a partner, ministry partner, life partner in this. And, and the ministry piece is non-negotiable. And she looked at me. She said, well, yeah, you know, that's what I feel like I'm, I'm called to do is ministry. I was like, great. We'll have a second date, you know. And so even from the get-go, it's always been about the mission. It's always been about the kingdom. We've got a job to do. And so, yeah, this certainly isn't a journey that I would have chosen. This certainly isn't the path I would have chosen. Um, you know, I did never see that at 46, my marriage to Lacey would end, you know, on April 2nd. Um and me being 46 and her being, you know, 40, I didn't know that that was going to end then. But the fact that it has, it doesn't mean that the ministry has stopped. It doesn't mean that my life has stopped. It doesn't mean that Jake and I, our life, our family has stopped. Hey, we're moving forward. Uh, we're doing great. We're having an awesome time. So loving getting to do what I get to do. I mean, I love the ministry. And I feel so alive getting to do what I do. And and so honored and privileged that God would choose me to be a part of, of what he's doing in these last days. And I'm so privileged that you are a part of this with us and helping us to do uh, what God has called us to do. And I'm so very thankful and grateful, honestly, for, for all the prayers, uh, all, of the, all of the support that you guys have given us over the last few months. It's just been amazing just to see the, the love and the genuineness that uh, you all carry for us and uh, just just the sweetness that you have had for Jake. I mean, uh, you know, we actually got home and there was a package in the mail uh, for Jake and some Legos. And uh, you know who you are that sent that. I just want to say thank you. We did get the, the package. He was super excited. And uh, it's just, just been cool. But uh, I wanted to share that with you because, again, that was something that God sovereignly did for me and for the sake of the ministry. Now I'll say this too. That isn't something that we can all just put our faith on. For God to do for us. I wasn't believing for that. I wasn't hoping for that, thinking about that. I didn't even know that was possible. But that was something that God sovereignly did for me because of what I'm going after, because of my stubbornness, and because of what I'm contending for and going after, I was going to need some answers. And I was going to need something very supernatural, uh, you could say very spectacular, not only for me, but also for the sake of the ministry itself, too, to move forward, to be able to answer questions. Because, again, what we're going after for something like that to happen, we need some answers. People are going to have questions. And so I'm so thankful, so grateful for what God did for me and providing that for me. And, and it just, the words cannot describe what that did for me. But that's why we're doing so good. That's why you see me. I've got a smile on my face. I've, I've got peace in my heart. Uh, very much looking forward to each day, looking forward to the future, looking forward to seeing all the wonderful things God has in store for us. But I'm just telling you, God is good. And God is good to Chad. Every day is a good day for Chad. Every day is a good day for Jake. And uh, we're just having a blast serving the Lord and and uh, fulfilling what he's got for us and looking forward to every day. And uh, just going after it and, and having fun doing so. So we're great. And uh, the ministry is great, family is great, and uh, just having fun serving the Lord. So anyway, I trust that that maybe helped you, maybe answered some questions for you. 
Um, don't think I'm weird. I'm telling you, it's awesome what God did for us. And of course, it makes me think about this question I've been asking a lot now. What's possible? What's possible with God? Uh, what's possible that he could do for you? Um, he's just amazing. And uh, just so very thankful to be a part of what God's doing in these last days. Well, I trust that helped you. And, uh, oh yeah, make sure and download that app. Hey, if you're not a partner with us and you'd like to be, you can simply go to the website and we'd love for you to be a part of the dream team. We've got some great, great projects that are coming up for 2024, some things we're beginning to work on even for this fall. And we've got some great meetings coming up. You can check those out at the website and download that app. It's available for you for free. So check it out. Hey, friends, we love you so very much. Our partners, thank you, thank you, thank you again for all that you do. We couldn't do it without you. We love you all. Appreciate you so very much. Remember, in Christ, we always win. We'll talk to you next week for another session of Healing Talks. Bye-bye.